for the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. If everyone could stand and join us in that, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Okay. Uh, next order of business is um, public comments. Do we have any public comments this evening? No? Okay. All right. Next up are some minutes. The first minutes are from our meeting of February 4th. I move to accept and approve the meeting minutes of February 4th, 2020, as shown. Do a second. Second. I, um, I actually had a question about the um, about the minute about the okay. comment that was made about the CVS sign. Did we end up being able to verify the that it is a legal sign? Obviously, that it was. Yeah. Remember that the, the it unenforceable, was enforceable yeah. thing. Yes, we have. Um, oh, you missed that. You might have missed that one. There was a question whether it was enforceable. Was it? Whether or not the sign yeah. was. So, some the the woman that was here last week said in her comments or two weeks ago said in her public comments that that sign former police chief Cochran told her that right. that, that that sign is not an enforceable. enforceable sign what what the chief at the time said was unenforceable Weird. They, they had put a no left turn sign up um, in the parking lot of uh, yeah. CVS and because it was on private property a sign that's on private property that says no left turn is unenforceable by the local police department. Oh, so okay. what they have, what they then did was move that sign across the street. It took a long time to get it moved across the street. It was across the street for a few, for a couple of months and it got knocked over by a plow back, I think during the, uh, the bad storm season. It never was returned until fairly recently when it was put up again. So now there's no left turn out of CVS. Right which is in accordance with the findings of the planning board at the time. Right. The current sign that says no left turn in was one that was added to the conditions at the time that CVS was approved way back, Got but it. never put up. Right. Then they just recently put it up when they were sought after some details based on the Jimmy McDonald uh, development ongoing. That's my understanding of the history. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. So is yeah. okay. the sign right. not on private property, though? The it's on a sidewalk. The current one is on public property. So because right. it was unenforceable before because it was on Because it was on private, private okay. property. Right. It was in okay, the CVS parking lot on the right-hand side. All right. It said no left turn. Right. And it was on CVS's private property, so it was not enforceable by the local police department. Okay. Okay. We will double check that it's still important. <laughs> so now you can't turn left into CVS? Now you can't Correct. turn left. Or left out. Or left Paint. out. Correct. Yeah. There's all no right. lefts at all. Okay, no lefts at all. All right, does anybody have any other questions about the minutes of the 4th? No, it's good. No? Yes, maybe. No? no? Sorry. Okay. That, no, that all those in favor of accepting those minutes? All right, four of us. Okay, um, we also have the um, minutes of the <coughs> joint budget meeting of February 8th, and the motion is to accept and approve the February 8th, 2020 minutes as shown. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you, sir. Any comments about the minutes of the 8th? I wonder, do you think that the other two committees have their own minutes? <coughs> They're supposed to, and I forwarded the, this draft because it's the same. It's the same right, stuff. yeah, no. I, that's, so yeah. I, I reminded them because okay. the clerk reminded me that the, each individual body should, should approve their minutes. They said that they, Ken Estabrook replied that he would do that, and then um, Colleen from the school department said she would do it too, so they okay. should get to it. All right, I was in favor of accepting those minutes. Thank you. <coughs> Correspondence items are A through I. <coughs> to make a motion to accept and approve. I and correspondence items A through I as shown. Do a second? Second. All right. 
Any comments or questions so regarding I got a, those? I got a comment. I'm gathering is the same resident that sent us that note. Mm -hmm. I'm Kathleen I'm Kendra? Kendra? Yeah, the person that She came. attended the last meeting. So yeah, so a couple of things, I don't know if you guys had an opportunity to read that note, but there are a lot of points that she's making there yep. that I think it's something that we should kind of be aware of them, um, especially the areas where she talks about real problems, but she's talking about the presence downtown. I think that's what she meant by a beat cop, uh, downtown presence by the police. And also the speed is something that I think I've been bringing that up many, many times. That that um, you know, there's a lot of you know, it's not being enforced. Uh, mm. People are not driving 25 miles an hour on Main Street. That's mm. a lot of times coming into town from mm. outside. You'd be surprised. Um, and the other thing is, she's talking about the parking lot behind CVS, and I know there's been talk about that changing the sign there to 10 miles an hour. I don't know if that's going to be enforceable, but it is gets gets bottlenecked behind, you know, by Subway and Temple yeah. Store there. So I think she's bringing some good points. Okay. Um, the last piece that she's, and I'm just highlighting some of the areas, the one thing that she's claiming is that we have too many rentals downtown. And uh, based on a lot of my, you know, um, information that I've gathered throughout talking to other consultants in downtown areas. It's their old adage, build it and they will come, because she's talking about we don't have enough businesses, but we have a lot of rental properties. Hmm. Well, the, the way you, you, you build, bring businesses in is if you bring in population. So by bringing, bringing in residents, you build it, they will come, the businesses will follow. Yeah. So I guess that's my comment in regards to what she's saying there. Fair point. Uh, Anyway, so that's just some of the highlights that I brought brought up from my note. I appreciate and and it's good Jeez. points. I can share this with the police chief if he hasn't already seen it. I'll make yeah. sure. Yeah. That's something I, I talked to Chief Dubar in the past about that speeding area. Okay. Um and then I don't know if you read the letter about the marijuana bill, proposed marijuana yeah, bill. That is um, part of the reason why we should not divert Thank you. away from uh, I, I what agree. the rules I, are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I also don't, I obviously taking the power away from municipalities to negotiate, I don't like that idea. It's because um, too many municipalities were doing it right. So is that what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, they got, and um, so, so they were the taking state does the state taking does. advantage of this? Okay. Yeah, and so, you know, they kind of, everyone gets punished. Yeah, uh, it's, it's what happens. Yeah, but I, I got a lot of confidence in, in our legal counsel, Kate okay. Roth and her team, that we're doing the right thing. I think that's what, you know, over the, the meetings that I've seen the past year, um, one thing that's really stood out is the fact that we are, it appears to other towns that we are a more we, we have a more conservative approach, but the reason we have, like, we're not going for this and this right, and this right. and this, we could get from them, but the reason we don't do that is because you're not actually allowed to. So we're, we're very conservative when it comes to that because we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. But we do ask for the max we're allowed to. That we're allowed right. to, absolutely. But I don't think they're, they're questioning that part. Right. That's not the mm -hmm. ones that, that's not, they're not questioning that. No. Well, I'd be interested to see what the, um, from the MMA, what the, um, you know, what the violations are, like what, what people are not adhering to. What change? You know, what kinds of changes they're making within the, the uh, scope of the um, control commission's um, approval process? My understanding is that they, some communities, are asking for kind of extra things beyond the three percent. So mm -hmm. they might ask for a donation, or they might ask for, um, you know, contribution, or to pave a parking lot, or do something like that. Um, and I, I think that's they're trying to crack down on that kind of thing. So. Although you know we don't want to take any power away from the municipality, I don't think, I don't, I don't think this would affect us because we really have just been kind of on the straight and narrow regarding our impact fees. <coughs> we went to a we went to a breakfast. You remember they went to that breakfast in in Concord, and they the guy was the guy was yeah. telling us that's how we should do it. That was the um, great. No, <laughs> right? That was the, that was the planning. It was breakfast. about that it was about, about something, but it wasn't but about marijuana. Would, but but he was saying it yes. in anything you do. The mitigations. You, you should be yeah, looking yes, for those. Yeah. More, yeah. That's fair. Which is, this but, is much but, more <laughs> sensitive to Right, right. But he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't limiting his comments to 
to what the subject matter was. He was saying, Anytime. if you go over this, try and get that done. Now, you know, that's a development agreement. That's a whole different story. And so when yeah. they go to the planning board and they want to redevelop like the old bowling alley, then they're going to have certain things they have to satisfy yeah. for, the, for the development of the building. The host yeah. to community agreement, um, one, you're correct that anything things should definitely be spelled out in the agreement so we can keep them, uh, keep them to it. But we can't go above, right. above and beyond what the law allows us to do. And that's what some communities Well, have see, this is how I interpret it, by the way. Because I was thinking we're not going to be able to, you know, negotiate or mitigate <coughs> for certain things. Is that, you know, that's, I guess. If this, that, if this proposed goes through, that might be the case. I hope it doesn't, though. Well, I think the town could still, the way I interpreted it was that the town could still ask for certain things. But the real ultimate judge as to whether or not they get it is not the agreement between the town and the uh, marijuana facility, but the state who makes a decision as to whether or not it sort of is fair. It would, yeah, and that would be their, problematic. Uh, they have the ultimate decision as to whether or not it is going to be approved. And it would, and that would, I mean, they're already so behind. Yeah. I mean, you, oh, did you see the number? I did you I see the, the number that, that, that they were talking about? Some ridiculous amount of. I don't, I don't think there's a problem if, if someone comes in and they want to build a, a, a new building in a particular spot and, and you ask for some sort of um, mitigation based on that yeah. building. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's, that's fine. But, but the issue is, I think the issue that you're talking about is communities tying the mitigation to the license, right. not, to the, not, to, not to the building things. It's like a pay to play. So right. they have 437 pending still. Oh, did you? No, yeah, pending licenses still. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah. 437. Yeah. Big number. You're right. 258 are in the approval yeah. stage. Well, right. Hopefully, a couple of ours are in there. All right. So, any other ish questions on the um, those items? Those nine. No. All those in favor? Thank you. Consent items. Information. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. All right. Nice. Yay. A little excited. Motion to accept and approve the three consent agenda items A through C as shown. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. That was quick. Okay. Any any questions on these? Uh, I think it's two of them are two of them are just repeats, annual repeats, right? Yep. Pro Park in the in the parade. Yep. And the proclama proclamation for Mr. St. John. Yay. Right. Justine, are you going to present it to your son? Um, I have been advised I should be a parent that day. So if someone else would like to uh, attend to present. I would be more than happy to come along if uh, the date works. I just have to look at the date. It was what, March 8th? March 8th, yes. Okay. All right, if, it's, if it doesn't work for you, just let me know. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll have it on my, uh, okay. I think um, right now I'm okay, I think. Okay. So all those in favor of the three correspondents. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Want to lead us into the fire station building committee, sir? Yep. So we've had a couple of volunteers for the fire station building Sorry. committee. Um, awesome. And uh, as far as well as the chief is more than happy to be on the fire station building committee to get a fire station. Um, so that's great because that means it's not a requirement to have the fire station building committee in place uh, before asking town meeting. Um, uh, for to the appropriation to fund for the construction of it, but it's it is helpful and it's a it's most towns and it is a good good practice to have a some sort of committee oversight of the progress of the building. Now, with that that being said, the building is ninety probably more than ninety percent designed and and a lot of the details have been worked out. But um, just like any other building project. Um, there might be snags along the way, so it's good to have the the committees provide a little bit of oversight, um, and um, and and also it, it means not everything has to come back to this body. It doesn't have to always come back to the board. It can be up for the fire station building committee. The volunteers, um, um, you know, we try to give people who have not been uh, a member of, of committees necessarily in the past, and so I reached out to. To, to see if anyone would be interested. So some, some of these members are relatively newer to the town or, or want to get mm -hmm. involved with the town. I think this is a great first step. And um, I haven't even met all of them. It's, you must be Mr. Boardman? Yes, sir. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so, um, 
So the individuals that we've reached out to that are, are here this evening, Mr. McCulley, Phil McCulley, with the hat. Uh, uh, Mr. Sidney Boardman here in the front. Um, Mr. Bruce, so Elliot Bruce here. Um, the three gentlemen that have been kind enough to show up this evening, get coffee with me, except for Mr. Boardman, I wasn't able to get coffee with him. Which, but, um, Elliot, you're here? Hi, there. nice to meet you. you yeah, and so uh, they're, they're willing to volunteer. And we're nice. to take it. They're in. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we don't, do we need to, we don't, I mean, do we need to grow them? No. Huh? No, I don't think so. Either. So, I and you're, you're looking for four members? Uh, I mean, five is, four is what we'll have with this. Five, I think, is a good number, but it, it doesn't, no three, this is good. This is a good number. Okay. If we have it, if someone else wants to get on board, of course we can do it. Yeah. Feel free to recruit. Yes. If you know of anybody to yeah. join you. Yeah. All right, so there is a motion to, and it is motion to appoint Fire Chief Anthony Stowers, residents Phil McCulley, Sidney Boardman, and Elliot Bruce to the Fire Station Building Committee with terms to expire June 30th, 2022. And, and is that, do a second. Second. All right, does um, anyone have any questions for any of the three gentlemen in here? We want to thank you for volunteering. I think it's a, it's going to yes. be a great project. Thank you very much for volunteering. I know the chief will be happy to. Have you guys all met the chief? Yeah. All right. He'll He's be reaching out to them. He's going to try to schedule time for them. Oh, the chief. The, chief have you been in the fire station yet, Elliot? Okay, so we're going to show them the old fire station. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to see the old fire station. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, I don't mind serving it as the others on if you guys are not uh, opposed to that. It's okay. That's it. We already we already did that once in yeah. August. We did. Yeah, we've been trying. This is our like. Oh, because you're trying so to get the committee we, together. So in August, I think we appointed you a liaison already. Oh, yeah. <coughs> the fire station <coughs> building committee. Because right. yeah. I was looking through some. Minutes I didn't have a committee there. yesterday. And it was August, but anyway. Um, so yeah, so you are the liaison. Um, so the you will have to. Um, Come to town hall and, and see the town clerk and, and get sworn in, and she'll and she'll be able to do that. I don't is she here this week? Or is it last oh, week yeah. she was so she's yeah, here. So she's here. Uh, Becky Moskin will follow up with you, gentlemen. To, yeah, she'll uh, send you emails and everything. But um, all those in favor of the three appointments? All right, four, so. Is it chief? It's four chief. Yeah, the chief four. Yeah. Sorry. All right, so four. Change four. Phil, you were on the last the last time we met, right? When yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, so Becky, Becky will reach out to you guys, I'm sure, and if not, the um, town clerk will sign you in. And I guess before we can have a meeting with any type of votes or business taken, we do have to get everybody signed in. Sworn so in. Yep. sworn in, yeah, sworn in. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's it. Thank you very much for your um, nice. volunteering, Should volunteering to be on the committee, huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Oh, okay. motion to approve the charge also. Where's the charge? To attach as a memo. All right. Let's read the charge then. It says fire station building committee. Yep. Okay. Okay. We're we'll just. I think we usually read them, so I'll read it. Okay. The recommendation, recommendation is to, the motion to approve the proposed charge for the fire station building committee as presented. The proposed charge reads, Fire Station Building Committee is charged with overseeing the construction of the Maynard Fire Station. The FSBC will meet periodically to assess and discuss the progress of the fire station project and will meet with the owner's project manager, architects, contractors, and fire chief as needed. The FSBC will be responsible for approving change orders over $50,000, and the FSBC will provide periodic updates to the Finance Committee in the Board of Selectmen and will provide an end of project report to be included in the annual town meeting. And then the, the rest is the uh, recommended membership is at four, four at large members, one fire chief, one BOS liaison, and a finance committee liaison, and a capital planning committee liaison. It's with, or capital. I did write or, just whichever. Or, okay, or capital, all right. And with terms to expire June 30th, 2022, or to be Discharge sooner upon completion of the committee's charge. Membership may require reappointment pending project's completion date. Do we have a second? Second. Sorry. 
Anybody have any questions about the charge? No. All those in favor of the charge? Okay. <coughs> Thanks. And then they can decide when they're going to start to meet. Or so uh, the chief, chief is uh, if he hasn't already, I think he has. But he will be. He has our contact information. He'll reach out to them and, and schedule time. I think he wants to meet next week. Okay. Next Tuesday. Okay. Perfect. Yep. So. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Great. Mr. Boardman, I want to tell you that um, I've met very few people that have uh, lived in Idaho, and I saw that you were a University of Idaho guy. I have I have in-laws that are there, so uh, there it's a beautiful country out there. So. Probably my favorite college. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so you guys are all set. You guys can stick around if you want. Or you can hang out all night. <laughs> Feel free to stay all night. That's all you want. <laughs> Ellen, how are you? Hi there. Nice to see you. Hi, Ellen. Let's see. We're going to have a motion to accept the historic curfew bell pending award of oh. Community Preservation oh. Act funding to transfer and install the bell. A motion to authorize the town administrator's office to coordinate temporary installation yeah. of the donated bell to t onto, prom onto town property. Next, John. Your next step. Do you have a second? Second. All right. So, um, this uh, thanks, thanks, you, you can come over here, <coughs> Alan. <coughs> this gift, um, the historic commission of which I am a member was approached by the trustees from the church on the corner of Walnut and Thompson Street. Um, their congregation has diminished to the point where they must sell their church and um, so they put it on the market and um, not expecting that it would sell quite, it's difficult, it has no parking, you know where that church is. Um, and um, they did get a buyer, a gentleman from Texas, apparently, who intends, according to the trustees, um, to use it as storage, uh, similar to Murphy and Snyder. Um, and he, the first thing he'll do is put a new roof on it, and then he intends, at some point, perhaps, to have a one, um, a, an apartment, one apartment in there. Um, the church um, group has apparently made the sale contingent on a couple of things. Um, it was always their intent to give us the bell, and I'll stop here and tell you a little bit about the bell. I've, I've included the history here. It was cast in England in 1856. Um, it's not really big. This is very difficult. It looks huge, but it isn't all that big. Um, it's up in the tower and um, used to be the mill's uh, curfew bell in the early days of the mill. Um, and I don't know which iteration, whether it was Assabet Mills, the Assabet Manufacturing, or the American Woolen Company, but I'm guessing it was um, probably the Assabet Manufacturing. If it was cast in '56, that would have been um, that that history. Um, it was rung every night at nine o'clock, and if you worked for the mill, you had to be home and in bed. Um, Different, different times. Uh, <laughs> and when they decided to cease that practice, the gentleman um, who was one of their watchmen, and he's named here, um, uh, Maddie Katvala, who was a member of that church, asked if they could have it for their tower, for their church. So they took it and they hung it, and it's been hanging ever since in the church um, t there. So they, the contingency that they've uh, agreed to, I guess it's in the PNS, is that the, the, if the town accepts the gift, um, that negotiations to get it out of the tower um, um, need to take place. And there is also, I guess, a historic mural in there, quite large, that was uh, not put on the wall itself, but put on something that was put on the wall. And they want to retrieve that. And there is also a um, time capsule in there cornerstone, which they want to try and find and get out of there. And so I think their agreement with the new owner when and if it gets to this point is that they will rent the church back for a period of time, which will allow them to then get, rid, get these items out of the church in a timely fashion. And they have a tradition in their religious um, um, congregation of something called replanting and they are going to be um, 
moving the small congregation and joining with another congregation somewhere in this area. And so they have many records of deaths and baptisms and marriages and all kinds of events in that church, um, which they want to gather and take with them. So having a period of time where they pay rent will allow them to vacate. They didn't expect it to sell this quickly, so they weren't prepared. And they're all, they're all, I mean, the, the woman I'm dealing with is a classmate of mine, so none of us are young anymore, so it will take some time to get the things out of the church. Um, we, it, we were approached by them at least a year and a half ago before they even put the, the oh, maybe even two years ago. And so knowing that this was coming up, we put an application in for CPC money because this is exactly what that money is. It's supposed to preserve historic um, artifacts, one. And um, in the meantime, I know so much about steeple jacks and rigging <laughs> that I never <laughs> thought I really needed to know. So I called a company over in Natick, OB Hill, and there was a young man on the other line, I guess a managing fellow, and he, he was just over the moon. He said, don't let this bell go. He said, this is an opportunity the town should not, you know, should not bypass. He said, um, but he did tell me that um, there are two ways that bells get in the tower. You build the church around it which didn't happen in this case, or you move it in after the fact, and that's what they did. And if you look at their tower, they have louvers on three of the four sides of their square tower, and it's understood, we, we think that removing the louvers physically will allow the bell to be, it's a, a process called drifting. They would remove it, uh, di you know, take it off where it's hanging, uh, secure it, and then drift it out of the tower down um, we put in for um, uh, the money, the CPC, and um, we think we have, we know we have enough to remove it. And I've been talking with Justin DeMarco about this. Um, he's advised me on how to proceed with this. Um, we would remove it, uh, crate it, and we would like to have it placed, and we think, and um, talked a little bit, I don't know if Bill is here, um, to Justin, maybe placing it somewhere in Memorial Park for the sesquicentennial um, and uh, with the provenance on a, a plaque of something that it was in the mill, moved to the finished church, donated to the, to the, uh, to the town of Maynard. Um, Alan, is it your intention to have it there permanently? Yes. The, uh, is there any issue with weatherization? Yes, that's what we have to, once we have it, and, and Justin said he'd have to store it, but then we need to figure out, you know, whether we put some kind of just a little roof over it. Um, it's been enclosed all these years, so um, I don't think we want to leave it out yes, to the ele elements. Concern. Right. Yeah. yeah, we'd have to then get some design, uh, maybe a, a cement pad, and then put some kind of a roofing over it, um, you know, uh, to protect it. Yeah. And rather than having it be displayed either in a town, in town hall or in... Depending uh, on how big it is. even in the lobby. I don't know how big the lobby of the new fire station is, but in the lobby of the new fire yeah. station, who knows? Yeah. Um, but we could always move it. But, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, without a doubt, I agree with what you've said, that it's something to preserve, and that's exactly what the CPC funds are for. Um, it's a piece of history that uh, talks to a lot about Maynard, um, but um, I'm concerned about putting it outside and then having it rust away. Right. Right. No, we would have to then, once we have it in our possession, and uh, I want to make clear, too, that if this became, you know, a very expensive project, if we couldn't get it out, then clearly the money, CPC money, just goes back to CPC. We would not be, you know, expending extraordinary amounts of money to save the bill. But it, it, it sounds like it's very doable, and it's an opportunity that will never come again, except if we had a discussion with the new owner and if he decided to take the tower down, if he was redesigning the church, if we could come to an agreement later on in, in which when he removed the tower, he gave the bell to us. There may be other opportunities, but right now um, we've, we've got, we think we have the funding and we think we have a way of removing it and then placing it somewhere, a place to be determined at a later date. Do you know if this bell had been in the clock tower? No, I don't think so. Nobody seems to know. I asked Paul Boothroyd if, if there's anything that you want to know about Maine, and Paul, know, Paul knows that if, it, if, it, if he doesn't know it, it's probably not worth knowing. Um, but he doesn't know exactly where it was. Um, you know, I suppose we could dig a little bit further, but um, I don't know no where need, it was. My, my benefit. I just yeah. wondered. If yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so that's, it's, it's, it's a piece of history that, I mean, when you think that mill, an eighth of its workers were under 16, half of them were women. They were making five cents an hour for 60 hours, and there wasn't heat in that until deck came. Do you know that? There was no heat in that building until deck came. Um, so you think the conditions that these people worked under while this was ringing every night to send them to bed and off the streets, it's, it really is. And I think, you know, we're working on another project, the Historic Commission, for a, 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 a beautiful marker for downtown Maine and for the, old, for the sesquicentennial that depicts the entire history of the mill over six storyboards. And it will be at the Olson Plaza, we think. So I think it enhances the economic development for the town for, to have the bell somewhere and visible. And uh, it's an educational tool. Certainly, we are a mill village. There's no denying that we should celebrate that. And with this new sign, and you see the history of the town from the last 175 years, I think it will be a great addition to the downtown the as mural well. that you mentioned earlier, is that something that they're giving to the town or, or selling to the town, or is that something they want for themselves? No, I think they're taking it with them. I think it's a religious significance oh. to their faith, I think. that She didn't tell me that at all. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what she's, yeah, what she's. So, um, you know, there will be things to work work out that I can't even imagine. Um, but uh, Justin's been very helpful through this whole thing, and I would continue to lean on, on him for, um, for guidance through this process. Okay. Anybody have any questions about the bill? No? Do you, how much did you put in for, for this? 20,000. 20,000? Yeah. And we know that Do you think that's it, gonna be enough for the whole process, or? I do, okay. uh, knowing now that the that the removal, the rigging, and the and the um, um, those two uh, pieces that a uh, fellow over in Natick told me about would be around six thousand. I think there's adequate money to then. I, we, we don't want it to ring necessarily. Uh, we mm -hmm. just want it to be mounted somewhere, and I think we can clearly do that and protect it. Again, maybe we do place it. Would be great. You know that location of the fire station is in an area across from St. Bridget's called Amory's Grove. Um, you know, that belonged to Amory Maynard. The church land was purchased for $700 from Amory and Mary Maynard, but that area there was called Amory's Grove. Um, it might be a very fitting place, well, David. Well, the design yeah. has a little, yeah. I was gonna a say, little yeah. seating yeah. area yeah. in front of that building. Yeah, that's place. true, right. that's yeah. true. I like that idea, yeah. Good thing the fire station building committee's here. <laughs> <laughs> they can, they're taking notes. <laughs> We're excited like about that. the sesquicentennial, so I, like uh, I think things are coming together really, really, really well. I think mm -hmm. it'll be a, a grand celebration of a lovely town. So I'm looking forward to the 19th. Yes, it's going to be good. Same. Yeah, we're going to have uh, antique cars representing, and they will carry the uh, time capsule to the front of the sanctuary, and. Um, then we'll have a grand ceremony to bring it up to the front of the sanctuary, and we'll have some fun opening it up. And uh, we've engaged the young people to join us. The music will be provided by the high school, and we'll have the American Legion, and we'll have we'll have a nice time. That nice. time capsule's from 1970. 1971. 71. Yeah. So does does anyone have a list of what's in? We there? do. You yes. Do? Yeah. Okay. There'll be no we're, surprises. We're, was, There'll be no a surprises. Discussion there. about what might be in it. I'm like, it's probably a yeah. beacon. In I think there. Dave Griffin knows. I, uh, he has a list of what's in it. It'd be the Acton beacon too, because Acton and Maynard had a beacon together at the time. So. Right. I was telling my wife, my name might be in it for Little League. Could be. <laughs> no, I, don't, I have no. I didn't ask. I, th I wanted to be surprised. So. So we'll see. Thank you. So Mr. Thank Jim, you. There's two. Okay. I, I typed up two motions. Okay. Board to consider. She's asking the, the time to take the bill, but you have to accept it. Right. So, so we're going to do the two motions separately? I recommend that. Because one is to accept it, um, uh, as I wrote, pending the award of CPA, because I don't have the budget otherwise. Yeah. But, um, and then the second thing is, is to allow, because I don't know exactly where it's going to go yet. So I just right, so, want to make so sure. It's we, We've, I read them both. We, they were seconded, so we can we'll vote on them separately then. Okay. <clears throat> First, we, the motion was to um, accept the historic Corfu Bell, pending the award of CPA funds um, to transfer the in and install the bell. All those in favor of that? Okay. And the second was 
a motion to authorize, authorize the town administrator's office to coordinate temporary installation of the donated bell on town property. And all in favor of that. All right, thank you, Mr. All right, thanks. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you very much, you, Ellen. Ellen. Will you send a note if I give you um, the address of the trustees uh, uh, with with this? Uh, is that how, in thanking oh, them like for, on behalf? Oh, to say like we've yes. Oh, absolutely. I okay, great. Yeah. I just wasn't sure where you wanted me no, to send me an email that. with their address. And yes, I will. I kind of like okay. the idea of ringing Good. the bell at nine o'clock. Thank you. <laughs> Get everyone off the streets. <laughs> <laughs> and if you got caught, if you got caught, you got fired. You got fired. <laughs> right. Yeah, so hearing that they're only like 16 years old. Oh, yeah. Yeah, imagine that. No. One eighth of the work is less than 16 years old. Less than 16. Less so. than 16 years old. Presumably they weren't going to school. No. no. A lot of those kids didn't go to school at the time. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they went to work yeah. till 9 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Caitlin, how are you? Doing well about yourselves. We're good. I, think. I can only speak for me, but I'm okay. So we have a motion to authorize the town administrator's office to draft the town meeting article to execute the transfer of ownership of marking board <coughs> lot as shown in Exhibit A attached from the Board of Selectmen to the Conservation Commission. Do we have a second? Second. Right. Oh, okay. you can have it. All right. <laughs> it's a toss-up. They fought for it. All right. Um, Okay, Megan. Want to explain to us? I mean, Caitlin. <laughs> All right. Um, so, do you want me to uh, kind of explain the whole? Thing? Yes, please. Yeah, we, have so a, we have a brief description, but if you could give us. <coughs> you know. Introduce yourself first, Katie, for the audience. Oh, yeah. I'm Caitlin Young. I'm the assistant town planner and the conservation agent. So, back in 2000. <laughs> oh, this is. Uh, I'm John Dwyer. I'm the conservation <laughs> commission and community preservation. Thank you, Katie. Um, in 2012, when the landfill, um, when the town determined to switch it over to a solar farm, um, there was a little bit of an issue because previously the land had been dedicated towards open space. And per Article 97, any land in um, open space use, um, in order to be taken out of that use or transferred to a different use, it needs to um, go to the state legislature and um, both branches need to kind of sign off on allowing the land to be transferred. And as part of that, they've required two things. One being the dedication of a dog park with some of that property, and two being a, um, a land swap where the town would either acquire or transfer to the Conservation Commission um, an amount of property equal to the landfill. Um, to, it, it, it's known as their no net loss policy. It's just to ensure that you know, we don't have a loss of open space. Um, and the dog park was um, built, as we all know, but the land transfer never occurred. Um, and since it never occurred, we have an outstanding Article 97 land swap issue. And because of that, there are certain grants we can't get from the state such as park grants, which could be used for park improvements, you know, finishing Veterans Memorial Park, or land acquisition grants that could help us purchase more conservation property when it comes up for sale. Um, so um, understanding that there wasn't, there are not a lot of funds to buy new land, I went through um, the properties owned by the Board of Selectmen and found the properties on the sheet in front of you. Um, bordered by Blue Jay Way um, and Mockingbird. And I chose, we chose those parcels, the Conservation Commission and I, because um, they have really no development potential. So there's nothing else that can really go there um, because it's covered in wetlands for the most part. Um, I will also mention that um, I'd spoken to legal counsel about whether or not we needed a town meeting warrant. And um, it looks like back when the land was acquired in the late 60s, early 70s, it was actually acquired for school for school property. Um, and I spoke to Jim Coleman, who was on the planning board at the time, and he actually mentioned that um, at the time, the town, in order to keep land from being developed, they were acquiring land under um, weird uses, such as for school property, just to keep it out of, keep it from being you know, developed or sold off. Um, but because the land wasn't actually acquired initially, by, uh, or for conservation or open space, it has to go to town meeting for approval of a transfer. Okay. So the map that you, that you gave us, um, I just want to clarify. Mm -hmm. So it, it is all shaded in green, and then you say green shading represents the wetland. So basically there, it, it really, that whole area is all wetlands. Yes, oh. and because it's resource, it's wetland resource area itself, and therefore that's, 
it's very much discouraged um, making any alterations to that. If you do propose a project with that, usually you have to um, provide compensatory wetlands. And Offset. on a space like this, it's not um, really doable. <laughs> is the area that's, that's going to be transferred, the one that's in red, in red yeah. um, is that currently conservation land? No. What no. is it currently? Well, who? It's currently owned by the Board of Selectmen. OK. Yeah. Uh, you See, you could have built a house. So the, no, no. The, the reason I raise this point is if it becomes the equivalent of conservation land or non-developable land, um, when we did our exercise to prove that we were um, safe harbored from mm -hmm. uh, 40B relative to the non-developable land in town, I don't know where, if at all, this land was counted. Probably not. It may have been counted as non-developable. But what I want to make sure is we don't lose it, and if, or if in the alternative, if mm -hmm. it adds to it and gives us further safe harbor for that one and a half percent or whatever the percentage is. Yeah, that's something I can take a look into. I'm not sure if it was counted. I'm assuming that they should have taken in the wetland area because it's relatively undevelopable right. areas such Hans as this. Hanscom land, they definitely would have. Yes, because it's protected by Article 97. Um, but, but if this was land, the, I don't know if that was considered, considered undevelopable. Con, yeah. <laughs> Which land? Sorry. The, the, the what we're the, calling the BOS land. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if that was considered undevelopable when they did that exercise, mm -hmm. but I want to make sure it gets added in as undevelopable land. Yeah. And doing, by putting it into the Conservation Commission's um, ownership, per se. That. We can look into it. Yeah. Can, I just want to make sure we're protecting ourselves. <laughs> Anybody have any other questions about creating a town meeting article? <clears throat> no? All those in favor? And then, so, I mean, it's, you'll have to, um, someone will have to get up in front of town meeting and speak about it. You could do it. Am I allowed to? Yeah, I yes. thought as a you could be a our guest. Of course. Yeah. Oh, anybody yeah. could yeah, do it. You could be a guest of the town, and you could do it, or one of us could do it. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I wouldn't you. mind. I can do it. No, no if you've done all the legwork, you deserve to get up and make the pitch. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> get booed. <laughs> oh gosh. Hopefully no, not. No one will boo you. But yeah, so that that's a ways out. But yeah, so thank you very much for um, all the hard work that yeah, clearly went on behind this. Certainly a uh, a research endeavor. What a research. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think Thank that's you. it. So thanks, thanks. and you know, we'll we'll see what happens with the the presentation for town meeting. And we'll. So they're yeah. sticking around because they have. She's, oh, the she's storm the water. The storm water oh. also. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. We're trying to kick you out. And you're just, <laughs> <kidding. I know. laughs> just not leaving. Right, so I don't blame this you. This is um, a motion to accept and approve draft control DD, which amends the bylaw chapter 34, stormwater management. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, what is this one, Caitlin? So, um, as you probably remember, um, I think two meetings ago, Lori Kennedy from VHB came in to do a presentation on um, the MS4 program. Excuse me. <clears throat> and per this year's MS4 requirements, um, we're required to make some modifications to our stormwater bylaws. Um, the majority of the changes in this amendment are per the MS4 requirements. There are a few that the commission has put in. For instance, um, we were looking at the triggering mechanisms for stormwater permit, and currently, the way it reads, it's an acre or more of disturbance, and dis disturbance means any alteration such as digging. It's not just building or creating impervious surface. It's actually physically disturbing the soil, so any construction site where you're digging up soil and that sort of thing. Um, and we decided to lower it because at one acre, there are very few properties in town that are an acre or larger, but simultaneously, all of our um, stormwater treatment mechanisms are, you know, kind of come together as being important in helping the town overall versus just looking at it as like one property versus another property. So by lowering that threshold, um, we're able to do more of a um, thorough review of projects. I will keep in mind, or keep in mind that this is only for new development or redevelopment, if this, by, by changing the threshold down to 10,000 square feet, it's not gonna affect anyone who's 
property already has a structure or disturbance that's 10,000 feet or greater. Um, it's only for new projects um, that are proposed or projects that are proposing more disturbance or a disturbance. Um, besides that, we are recommending. Is, is that specified in here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, well, it's not. It's not in the language of the bylaw. It's well. It's in the sponsor comments because okay. it's the language saying a land disturbance greater than ten thousand square feet, um, the disturbance itself is considered the alteration, not like. How, like I, I'm trying to visualize how how many square feet, if you know, is an acre. Um, it's for forty two thousand. Okay, so, so this, this is, is like a quarter, quarter of an acre. Yeah, it's like a quarter yeah. of an acre. Which means basically, which a typical that's the typical size for a new lot in town do you think or? um so more or less um depending on what zone you're in i know general residents um if you had a lot that was completely vacant the minimum's about 7500 um but I, I did look at overall the parcels in town and actually most of a lot of them are right under that 10,000 or rate right above it but in those cases the you would have to disturb the entirety of that parcel, which isn't particularly common. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, I don't think we, and I think this is what Armin's getting at, we don't have to tell you that what kills these things, the town meeting, is are these, these small little things that people yeah. say, wait a minute, that yeah. means I can't, you know, build a pool in my backyard. Yeah, and it's, it. yeah, a pool would still be allowed as long as you're not using you're not taking 10,000 square feet to Long disturb the soil, pool. which that's is a, a lot of, that would be a type, large pool. Yeah, people. and um, and that's something we're ready to explain. We figured in the presentation we'd kind of break it down and explain that, you know, if you're just doing, even if you're just putting in like, let's say a, a garage or a deck or something like that, it's most likely not gonna trigger that 10,000 square feet. <clears throat> But you, so even if it does trigger that 10,000 square feet, you're not even you're not actually saying that they couldn't do it Correct. either. It just means yeah. that they have to go through a site review right. plan. Uh, yeah, we just have to review um, their stormwater treatment and yeah. pretreatment and the overall hydrology it's of the site. It's protective of the environment. It's protective of our community. It's protective of our stormwater. Yeah, our stormwater system especially. Yeah. 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 So, all right. Um, does has the um, Bylaw committee seen this too? Did they, have they got a copy? See this? I, I did Omen send it, notes? I believe, last week, but I haven't had a response back yet. Oh, I, maybe they haven't met. I don't, I don't know if they have to or not have to because there's somebody else sponsoring, but I would think that they would they would review, at least review it for us yeah. and make sure we're yeah, they should endorse in, the, it, but, in the same but, page. Um, so you can hold off if you want now and we can propose it. For the, like we can allow Bill Coleman and his team yeah. to look at it. Well, I, I think we're just, I don't know that we're, are we, so you, we are asking to accept water. and approve the draft control. It'll just go with the rest of the warrant articles. But you don't have to do that tonight if you don't want to, if you want to wait for Bill Coleman. I, I just think for, every, for everyone's sake, it might be wise to just wait for Bill's group to. That's no problem. Bless it. I'm going to be back th that day anyway, so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. So we'll let them take a peek and then we'll, we'll take a look. So I'll withdraw the, um, the motion. Where, where did the language that, you know, the real detailed language, did that come from um, the stormwater people? So some of it was through, um, some of it was recommended by the MS for permitting. Um, a big part of this as well is that, so our stormwater bylaw follows the Massachusetts stormwater handbook. Mm -hmm. The problem is at the end of this fiscal year, the Massachusetts stormwater handbook is going to be, is not going to be in compliance with the MS4, federal MS4. So we're kind of taking a step Got it. further right. to make sure this is all set so we don't get in trouble with the federal government. The state was able to get an extension, but the municipalities for the most part are kind of stuck. <laughs> so um, some of it was recommended by VHB and some of it um, <clears throat> we worked together to put together and the commission as well. Mm -hmm. So we took, a, we had an entire working meeting and then half of another meeting to kind of work this out. Next, we'll have to do the regulations as well. Okay. No, most of the language is recommended. So it's like. Yeah. And for somebody who falls into this category where they, um, where they have to go through a process, is there a fee? Is there a, a processing fee? For so right now there's a $200 um, fee for a stormwater permit. Um, in my time here, it's pretty much been commercial 
properties or uh, multifamily residential such as um, you know Jimmy McDonald's properties at 42 and 115 the fire station um, was required to have one there's a $200 fee um, for us if peer review is required they'd have to pay the peer review fees as well do you know if that fee is uh, consistent or um, in line with other communities um, actually, as we do the regulations, we might take a look at it. Um, we haven't really spoken about it much, but I was thinking that depending on the size of the project, like a project <clears throat> the size of, let's say, um, 129 Parker Street, a $200 fee for that doesn't really make sense right. versus a small project such as even the fire station. Mm -hmm. So as we go through the regulations, we're going to take another look at the um, application fees and try to figure out something a little little more logical than what's there now right and as I think we've had discussion here about looking at all of our fees yeah and uh, just making sure they're compliant you know, yeah I agree wrong word, yeah okay, while looking at other towns I did I have taken a look at what other towns charge and it's kind of it goes either way but what I think is probably the most effective thing would be doing like a tiered between types of projects like larger development over X amount of acres versus smaller you know things like the size of the fire station or if someone if a smaller project triggered it as opposed to you know just seems a little bizarre to me that it's two hundred dollars flat across yeah. the board like three hundred dollars for us uh, for working on on a, on a site you know yeah, cause there's a, site. yeah and there's a lot of review that goes through it too between the commission and me and other staff so um two hundred it just doesn't seem like it's uh the appropriate fee for that things like this are a way to uh you know you don't want to make a generating revenue, but no. generate yeah. revenue. It helps. <laughs> yeah. um, nope. Okay. Any other questions? I don't right. think so. I don't know. Wonderful. I think that's awesome. it. I think that's all. Yeah, I'll send him a follow-up email, and um, I'll see you guys next time. Because I have to be here anyway next time. So. Okay. No Great. skin off my back. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very Good much. Good night. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, anytime. Anytime. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. We're good. All right. <laughs> Mr. Budget update. Budget update. Oh, good Lord. Um, so, Mr. Chairman. Sir. Following the. February 8th joint meeting and then I got sick again and when I came back my cousin and I put our heads together he's around here somewhere he's he, in back. We, and we tried to figure out how we're gonna pay for everything again um, Mike in the meantime went to a finance committee meeting and, and tried to get better a better feel from them what they were <coughs> looking for because they were not fans of our original proposal to pay for the feasibility study for the new elementary school taking a million dollars out of the general civilization fund Mike's alternative that they seemed receptive to um, was this new scheme that we're proposing. Um, half from general civilization and half through what we're, we call a capital override. Um, officially, it's known as a capital outlay expenditure ex exclusion. Um, but the point is, instead of, instead of taking the full million dollars out of the general civilization, what the finance committee didn't feel comfortable with, we wouldn't. So we would, we would artificially increase taxes for the other half um, and not impact taxes for the first half, the 500,000, with the idea that um, the MSBA, the state building authority, school building authority, would reimburse the town potentially, I don't want to give exact numbers, but let's say it's 30 to 50% of what it could be, which could, in fact, replenish the general stabilization fund. Finance committee seemed to like that plan better than, than the other plan. So I, can I ask a question about that? Um, one of the things that came up at that meeting was um, the finance committee was, didn't appear to be um, satisfied with the fact that if that money was paid, when the MSBA repaid the money to the town, yeah. that it wouldn't, that it might not get spent where, it what might not go where it's supposed to be. It might not go back into general stabilization. I so I, I'm just curious what the, I, I kind of assumed, you, you know, that, that it would just happen. So is that a concern or is it just if we, if we earmark that that's, if that's the decision. Can you earmark it as part of the article? Correct. So like we can just be very clear in the appropriation, whether it be this appropriation or when, when the state comes back with that right. money, <clears throat> that that's where that money would go to. Okay. It's, like a, it's a form of revenue. It's it's any right. it's another I mean, budgetary source, and right. so it, we, it does have to be. Because what yeah. would happen? It would go to the general fund, and then we would have to That's go to town meeting, 
Kind of like free cash does. And if then, we have a, if we okay. have an extraordinary amount of revenue, right. <coughs> some of that extraordinary revenue can go back to the stabilization funds. So basically, at the end of once the once the state pays us back for it, you would do a, a an article. Right. Like what would happen is we would put it, it into a separate line as yep. non-recurring, identify it, and then we go to town meeting. We would create the, the article to yeah. put it back in. We yeah. would specifically identify on for the that. back end. You wouldn't see yeah. that, but the account would be set aside so that right. we didn't touch it. That otherwise. it wouldn't. Okay. Um, uh, go ahead. What's the impact on the average sim single family? Yeah, I knew tax? you would ask that. <laughs> All right. Based upon the current tax rate, if we do, it would be one year only and one year only. And then it would disappear the following year. It would be approximately for five hundred thousand for one year it would be one hundred and twenty five dollars and ninety six cents. Yep. That's for the average single family household based on current right. tax rates, which is about a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar house ish. And then what's uh, plan B should the yeah. override <clears throat> fail? Right. Then we would go back to. The original plan. So the original plan was How the full million dollars. How would you get dollars. there? Uh, would you be able to get there in time for funding for the summer? No, 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 no. So let's let's back it up. So the, so um, timing is key, and I, and I, and this is all kind of complicated. So I'm glad you're bringing this up. So the timing is you have the this the MSBA, the Massachusetts School Building Authority, wants to have a commitment from the town by January of 2021. So there's kind of two opportunities traditionally that this town, Maynard, appropriates money. One is in May at the annual town meeting. Sometimes we do special town meeting articles as well, which we'll probably have to do this year. And then the second opportunity is around October. Right now we're thinking about October 5th or so to do a, another special town meeting. And traditionally we do do that fall. And that would be, that's the time to do it. Now we could schedule another special town meeting sometime before January 2021. But generally that that's about the time frame we do it and so um, I suspect that there would that there's going to be more conversations to this and so I at this time I'm not proposing I'm not expecting an annual town meeting article for for whatever the scheme we come up with I did expect it to be in the fall and that's what I, I spelled out in the timeline so in the spring it's to address the roof in the fall it's to address the feasibility study I mean, the danger of what you just, that's the danger of what you said. The downside of doing it as a capital exclusion is that if either town meeting were to vote, either one of them voted down, or let's say you took the vote and it was voted down, we would have to come up with an alternative to how to fund or, the study. Or the risk is you miss the MSBA opportunity, and I don't know what that risk means exactly. So let's look at it holistically when, and I don't know what else is on the table for tax increase potential for that. For You know, you say it's $125 first time, one year done. That but was the other drawback. If there, are other, if there are other tax increases that are being proposed for that year, it's not just $125. Oh, yeah. It's $125 plus $76 right. for, the, for the fire station, plus whatever we have for whatever else we were talking about at the Saturday that, meeting. Right, right. You might be looking at a $600 increase for right. somebody, and when somebody's looking at that from town meeting, it's not a $125 oh, tax increase that they're looking at. They're saying, which one of these am I going to say no oh, to? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't disagree because when I sent so Greg risking, a separate email, yeah, everything I, you mentioned was part of that, is that if you would ask voters which one they would choose, if you gave them but, an option, you know they would choose the one you know, doing it out of state I, I just think it's, it's only fair to the residents it, to explain that, look, this correct. is one of possibly three or four. So right. it's not just the, the, you know, this one, whatever it's referred to, it's $125 increase for one year. You might also be looking at, they might also be at the same town meeting in the same ballot that we go to be asking for, fire station, uh, green meadow, you know, whatever the heck is out there for a total number of $700 I don't disagree. I think that was the thing I mentioned to Greg, is that with the downside to it, really the option should be we present both options to you and then eventually, you know, decide which one you wanted to choose. Yeah. I mean, could, I, could I go into some of those, uh, some of those other items that we were referring yeah. to? Um, so that's, that, I wanted to bring that up as kind of one of the biggest changes. But before that, because I wasn't here, but I understand that the, 
CBI, who's the consultant that we use to do the roof study, did brief the board as well as the school committee and the school committee's recommendations to address the green metal roof. The roof, particularly the period kindergarten and the kindergarten wing, which is the 1974 and 1954 wings of the, of the elementary school, the oldest portion of the elementary school. <coughs> so um, I had a follow up conversation with the consultant last week to make sure I understood what was said. Um, and, and then so allow Mike and I to kind of come up with this funding scheme, which I presented in the packet, and I'll, I'll explain now. So the 1974 section, the pre-K section, needs to be fixed. Um, I think the, the proposal that he threw out there was an estimated amount of $313,000 uh, right. to do that, to do those repairs, which is a certain amount of like the resurfacing as well as sections of the um, corrugated steel that needs to be replaced. Um, that's the 1974 section. That's the currently unoccupied pre-K pre -K side. And you have the 1954 section, which he believes also needs to be addressed. And that was something that even the school committee said, if I recall, in their recommendations. They said, we absolutely want to get the pre-K occupied. We also want the kindergarten side repaired simultaneously, preferably over the summertime when, when the school is out. So... Um, the consultant wasn't entirely sure about the estimate of that amount, but in combination, um, he felt comfortable with about $650,000 to do both. So do the whole shoot and match, $650,000. Um, now that doesn't address the envelope, that doesn't address, and by the envelope I mean there was some woodworking, some, some window uh, repairs that, that was identified, and if you recall in the report. Um, uh, there's also a section of the roof just to the north of the uh, cafeteria, which that part of the roof was built in the 80s, but that is also flat. That needs better regular maintenance. So he didn't feel like it, this is over the phone call with me, he didn't feel like that needed to have like a full renovations, but we do need to do a better job of addressing the regular maintenance. My plan in response to that is, we are still going through the negotiations to have a director of building operations, a facilities manager, so, and I want that person to be able to fulfill that role of doing better maintenance on the school as a whole, but particularly that section of the roof. Um, and then, and as well as the, the rest of the envelope study, but we would have to identify funding to support that if that's the case. Right now, the school, the school department allocates uh, about $15,000 a year to the school maintenance, and that, if that may not be enough, I'm not sure, to address all the, all the individual needs of that envelope study. I know I'm going fast, but nope, this, is in the, this is in the spreadsheet. So, um, to go back, what I was saying, that $650,000 a year, Mike and the finance team crush the numbers, it comes out to about $143,000 a year if we were to do it through a debt exclusion, which is what I'm proposing because I don't have the money in capital stabilization. The finance committee seemed not a fan of taking out of general stabilization. The only other way you can come up with money is through general fund or through an artificial increase to taxes. That's a debt exclusion. So. Um, do it over the course of five years. Um, comes out to $143,000 <coughs> a year. Um, let me see what the average, and the average single family impact estimate, which is your point, David, is $36. So that's um, in addition to um, the $500,000 worth of, uh, uh, towards the debt exclusion towards. Um, and that 36 is only for one year also? No, no, that's every year. That's every year for five years. That's for the that's 650000 It doesn't include any additional uh, six um, years. Yeah. How was their discussion? It was a unanimous vote that they took? Did they take a vote? Where? Who? The Ms. Finance Ms. Committee? Ms. Or did they just make a recommendation? On which? 650? Um, on, on, on which did they make a recommendation on this 120, on this, oh, this uh, what, what do you refer, capital outlay expenditure exclusion? The, cap the override, the capital override? They were, their discussion was they did not feel that the million dollars that Rizzi was going to be spent should be, they felt it should be put before the voters. That was their concern. They didn't just feel that we should just take it out of stabilization. <coughs> so the capital override suggestion I had was basically the compromise. Now, whether, which one is better than the other or which one that's really what the compromise is. They have, you know, and they mentioned, I mentioned it to them, and they seem to think that that was the way to go. But, you know, oh. as you pointed out, there were drawbacks to, to, to going with the capital override. I the town has point, passed too. I wish we had this discussion on Saturday morning. Exactly. Because, you know, then we could have had 
their minds with our minds and, the, and you know, the school committee participation. Um, we talked about having another meeting at some point, um, but I don't know if we have the time. Um, well, you do, because you're not going to be putting this, no, no, that well, one. If, if before any town meeting, correct, it would be pretty tight. There, it might be a possibility, but either way, we need to have the article drafted if, in fact, it's going in May soon. But if we postpone it until October, you would have the rest of the summer. I, I take, I, you know, I, I'm always trying to take the more conservative route when you're talking about potential for uh, need something to be done, do the one that you're more guaranteed to get results from. Which um, would be that one. Yes, rather than having to scramble. That's why I don't put much faith in this environment on an override. I really don't. I don't think it's, you know, I'm hearing too much about mm -hmm. concern relative to, uh, to taxes. And if we're going to be throwing I'll be honest, I was out collecting signatures. I think out of the 60 signatures I got, 48 of the people said, what are you going to do about our taxes? That is, it, it was extraordinary. And without any prompting, um, it's, it, that is the number one issue on people's minds, is the cost of living. And if you're going to risk a project that needs to be done on an override. Now, I understand the, the Finance Committee's thoughts. I just think it deserves a, a more serious discussion I mean, about the, the potential uh, failure of an override vote. Well, and I did well, send I, them an email and they're voicing exactly what you said. Yeah. And that's why we decided, you know, eventually it's just going to be up to the Board of Selectmen, which one they, you know, they felt more comfortable with. I mean, you really should be looking at both, not one or the other. You know? Unfortunately, so I, you know, I, I, under, I definitely understand bringing it to the people, um, you know, and then let the town, you know, really feel have, have a vested interest in this. However, by bringing it to the people, that means we raise their taxes. Right. So if we did it the other way, without bring, without that, if we did it through a general stabilization right. or a capital stabilization then you know yes they wouldn't have a vote but then at the same time it wouldn't raise so they the would taxes. have a vote so that's they where, would just have to vote whether, right, whether or not you're going to appropriate yeah. from Correct. yeah so exactly sorry so it's not like a it's not a ballot vote i'm sorry i missed no, it's okay but that but it, you, you you make a you make a good point yeah. it is it is there's still it's a different approach and so we're not we're not expecting you all no. to say this or that we're just sort of pose, proposing they, another this option. This is where we're yeah, at. And we figured we'd give both is, options, it, and then rather than say this is the one, no, it, we'd give you both. Also, I mean, this this was their point, is that, you know, from a, from a municipal finance standpoint, it, it's not necessarily the most fiscally prudent approach to whittle down your reserves to such a point where it could harm our bond rating. It could harm our ability to borrow. Uh, when we go out for a bigger project, we get a higher rate because our savings are too low. Yeah. That's that's where the discussion comes in. But you're also taking the risk. Um, so I don't I yeah I don't like the risk of a failed vote and then. Yeah. You know. So we, we the, the urgency there. I'm sorry. The urgency is not there as the degree is fixing the, the pre-K and kindergarten roof, if that's how the board feels to go. And so in, in that regards, you can do a special town meeting as part of the May 18th annual town meeting. Just that's what we often do. Mm -hmm. And then you can, you can immediately appropriate the, the $650,000 if the board feels that's appropriate. And then the very next day, we can contact bond council and the banks and then move forward so that way they can start the construction. And I've already, I've already briefed CBI that they need to get going on starting to draft construction documents because we should have bid that already uh, for the summertime because all the contractors, they, hmm. they probably already have their bidding schedules. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have, to start, we have to start bidding. But either way, it, yeah, yeah. So, that, so you have different projects. The roof has to get address, addressed. And then uh, but this decision can be made in the summertime. I think that I think meeting in, in March, if possible, we'll do another round table or joint budget review, whatever you want to call it. That's great. But at a minimum, I think we should do it in July, just as we've said before, uh, so we can make sure we kind of prepare for a fall time meeting. So, Justine, just so I understand, you're, yeah. you're, cons you're sort of leaning towards being 
uh, lack of a better phrase, to be easier on the taxpayer? Um, being concerned with the taxpayer, yes. Yeah. So, so I don't know, and that's the thing is, I think we're talking, and and I, I forget what the what the proposal was before we started, because I know because I feel like we're talking, we're also talking about two different projects too, because we're talking about yep. the the roof, and then we're also talking about the MSBA. The MSBA. I, I personally feel, and I I know that they're going to disagree, but I, I I feel that for the MSBA stand from from the for the feasibility study, if we decide to go forward with that. That if as long as it's repaid, that that 38 to 40 to 49 percent is repaid to the general stabilization account, then yep, I th right. I think that that's worth that yeah. without having to again, especially if there's a plan that we're going to go for a fire station mm -hmm. and if we might have to go for the I'm just trying to I, I, lessen I it hear you. a I'm little just, bit. I just want to hear <laughs> what the you know I, I, so. I, you know, we, just, we, got, I told you, we basically felt that we owed it to the Board of Selectmen to present both yeah. scenarios yes. and, then leave, and then basically, you know, you would be able to decide which one, you know, you felt. I mean, I'm not voicing my opinion either way, so. When you were out, right, I thought the, I thought the school, I thought the school wanted to, was talking about a lesser number than the 650 of the, Weren't they going to do the 313? I thought, they to do the, I thought they wanted to do the one, they the did one want piece. They did but if I recall in the letter, I may, I may be misremembering, but they did, in like one of the lower paragraphs, they noticed, they did. They said that at they, some they, point they, it's going to be. But so, so that's my thing is, I don't, do we need to clarify from them? Because I actually don't remember what their ask was. They wanted to do the, the orange. Yeah, the they orange wanted to do part the of the 313. Yeah. And then, Justine, I believe you asked. Um, what about doing both? Is it less both? expensive doing them together? And yeah. uh, the gentleman from CBI said a little bit. Um, <laughs> but then they were concerned about going up against the accessibility trigger as well. Yes. So, 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 so that's so. I don't know if we need to get like a definitive, concrete. They, yeah, or they, they, they kind of left that meeting having a little more research to do. I think. Um, that's they, well, they were looking. At, they were looking at not crossing that, that threshold, the thirty percent threshold. Right. Was it to thirty percent? Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're we're still, hopefully, okay with that. Justin has been crunching the numbers, and I, I make an allusion to this in, in my notes. Is that. Um, <clears throat> It's 30% of renovations, not maintenance. Right. Renovations that have been done within 36 month period. Right. Justin crunched the numbers of all the work we've been doing in the Green Mental Elementary School. He thinks we got about $900,000 left before we hit that 30% threshold. But that's for this year, and then whatever comes up next year. That's right. So and it's then rolling. whatever comes up, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's rolling. So um, that's $650,000 is still below that, and it, and it gives us a little bit of wiggle room um, to do any anything beyond if we need to. Um, but my question to the school committee would be. Do they when when would they want the other half of the flat roof fixed? If they if we do the pre K side for three hundred thirteen thousand dollars or whatever it is, right. then are they okay with waiting another year until the next summer to do the repairs? Because at that point, that's it may I also know. cost more too by that time. But very right. much, well, yeah. yeah. Very, and and so I don't. You're, to your right. question, I don't know what the school committee what their timeline. What their prefer, I would expect their preferred timeline is do it all at once. But I I I guess not. So I think we need a we need a definitive an actual definitive request from the school committee. Does that make no. uh, yes, we, the six fifty was put in there knowing that correct we may not use the entire amount. We're not going to go out that's and right. borrow so right. three thirteen. Right. We may only borrow three thirteen, and right. that's it. Right. right. The thing right. is, if you don't authorize that, it's like right. authorizing yeah. for building, yeah. you know, a high school. Yeah, that's if you point. don't authorize it, you cannot ban. You cannot short term. Right. right. The alternative then becomes. You're going to have to find three hundred thousand dollars later on. Yep. So all this is doing is saying it allows you the flexibility. Up to six hundred thousand dollars. Not doing okay. it right. will do it. Yeah. 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 I'm back there. So the, so the bid documents will be done because again, um, the uh, Mike, Michael Teller and I were talking about this. He'll do he'll do it in uh, what's called a base bid. So you, you get the base bid of just the 1974 the pre K side. Then you get an alternative amount of the 54 side, and then so you don't have to do that if you don't want to. If you find out it's going to be more expensive, or you just you know whatever, and then he can do a separate alternatives for options beyond that as well. So um, and that should bear out what the true cost would be that you know like the, the contractor, the timeline it's going to be because maybe it's not possible to do both 
in the, in the uh, I can't remember, it's, it's not very long between no. the last day of school and when the teachers go back in. So if the contractors all come back and say like, I can't do it, then, then you have your answer. But, um, okay. so yeah. I, he's, on, he's at the Galapagos Island for the next couple of weeks. Uh, but when he comes back, he should have the documents. So. I mean, an example would be the high school. We did it as three separate bonds. Right, right, right. So and they were all no. done over a period of a year. It's more like so, bathroom stuff, that's what we yeah. Right, but so, so that, that's, but to the point of, as far as how much it would cost you, how much it would raise your taxes in general, if you end up only borrowing 313 or three, then it would be roughly 000, half of it. Yeah. Even though you're authorized for 650, it's only going to be the. It would be. I say you only did yeah. the 313. Yeah. It would cost you 18 right. dollars exactly. roughly. So one quick question about the, um, just since we're still on, we're on Green Meadow, um, I know that we we talked about the capital project for the bathrooms yeah. that they want to do the bathrooms. Yeah. So again, though, now we're, f and I don't know. Um, and at this point, I'm not sure who to ask, but that again is now probably adding to that. It does number of of the, of the trigger again. Yeah. So I, is, I believe Justin included that in his, in his okay. calculation. Okay. But you're, you're, but you're, that's a, it's a, that is a renovation. So yes, it has to be. It's not, it's not painting. Right. It's not regular maintenance. That is renovation. So that's not something they would want to put off, so they have more of a buffer or <laughs> whatnot. That was one so of their, like top. The top ones. Okay. Yeah. All right. Also well, I think if it made two. the list, it is yeah. their top one, right? Uh, of the three it items. made the final, um, unless it was like they, a really expensive one, like a new school that <laughs> we can't put on the no, free cash. No, of the lesser capital items between right. the, Fowler Middle, the Fowler Middle School bathrooms, the Green Middle bathrooms, and the Wi-Fi. Those yeah, are what made it, yeah. The two-year Wi-Fi. I don't know if they, uh, of those three, they're all kind of the same priority, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the... Um, Smart projectors. They want the smart projectors too. Right. So, and, and I also want to point out, Mr. Chairman, that um, there's a little bit of a different scheme for some of the close out. This is kind of in the weeds. Some of the close out articles um, that we were proposing that was going to contribute towards mm -hmm. kind of like what free cash we would be doing free cash right. articles that have just been unused because the project is either complete or not going to be completed, and so. Um, Justin DeMarco wanted to be able to funnel some of the, about $24,000 worth of that cap close out funds back towards specifically DPW projects, as opposed to just kind of going into the collective capital uh, appropriation, um, which I'm okay with. Uh, a lot of those are, all those articles were DPW projects anyways, oh, they were. but okay. he, that's what he's proposing is a DPW capital improvements. So I don't know if the board had questions mm -hmm. on that. Again, it's Do we know if those are articles allowed for reuse of that money? Yeah. Yes. So they were all from free cash, so what you're doing oh, okay. yeah. is putting it back. Yep. So it's only twenty-four thousand um, dollars. But uh, but with the capital planning committee, there you know that that definitely is a threshold that everything has to be reviewed by them anyways. So it's kind of like a supervisory sort of role. <clears throat> You know, you say it's only twenty-four thousand dollars. We sat in a meeting it's true. Uh, mm -hmm. Tuesday night. I thought big numbers. A Thursday lot, yes. night of last week <laughs> yeah. with the uh, recreation commission. Right, that's true. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about eighteen thousand dollars, and we told them we didn't have it. Yeah, you know? that's that's fair, but that's for regular maintenance. They want they want eighteen thousand dollars a year, if I recall. Yeah, they do. Um, and they do. this is more. We need to buy big items that will have smaller maintenance. So, but that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Maybe a mower. Mower? No, they already, they already committing to the mower. Who's committing? DPW. Found out some DPW. DPW. Okay, so we'll have to. Follow, but I'm going to follow up about that. Speaking of yeah. which, well, follow up the mower now. Mower. Somebody, mower. DPW is committing to it. Somebody asked about mower. Are you going to follow up about the mower? Golf balls must have a mower. Well, <laughs> I, I don't. That's a good idea. I'm not, is that something you're doing now or tomorrow or what? No. No, I mean tomorrow. Just later. <laughs> tomorrow. All right, another time we're going to follow up on the mower, right? Tomorrow. All right, let's go into the, I guess, we're, are we done with the budget? Is it, do we have more? So, uh, that, I mean, no, that, I think that was it. Um, okay. it so, I is that? I, I was kind of looking if there was any specifically, as far as the urgency goes, I do need to know if the board has any objections at this point or if they, or, or what your hesitations may be about moving forward with starting to draft at least the $650,000 debt exclusion request to fix both sides. Now we can wait until we get clear, clear sort of preference from the school committee. Um, but but it, well, we need to be drafting these articles at this but, point. But if we do, and if we don't use it, I mean, to your point, it, 
Yeah. No. Yeah, from a tax it. perspective, it has to be explained to the residents how it's yeah. going to work. So Same exactly. thing as the high school. You, yeah. you authorized $40 million right. and ended up only using, you know, we, I mean, we got money back, but out of the 20 If it's explained properly, I don't know if we, we, we're going to have an issue with so, that. Right, and then simultaneously we will know what the true cost is Correct. when we get the bids. So it, is the board okay with moving forward with starting to draft these articles, for at least for the $650,000? Yeah. Um, I'm okay. I don't know. Yeah. All right, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, you're not you're not approving the article right now. We'll have to come back with, with the actual article. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of questions. I mean, I'm okay, but there's still a lot of questions before we yeah. move anywhere. So that could change. Very good. Okay. Okay. So no, Mr. Chairman, that was that was the sort of the big updates. I don't. We don't have any updates on the operating fund side. Okay. Of the house. No, other than we'll change the budget to reflect the six to 143. Yeah. Instead of the 2.2, because that's off the table. So since we're on the subject of the of the budget, I mean, based on the meeting we had on February 8th, uh, are we going to schedule some kind of a follow-up? or? We are. We're going to talk about that in about two minutes. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I've been... So anyways, yeah, so we'll, I'll get to that now. I'll take it out of the, the my notes part, the report. Oh, I'm sorry. But yeah. No big deal. So, we, so I've been going back and forth a little bit with everybody, and everybody includes FinCom, school committee, you know, the three of us just, I mean, you know, um, Bethlehem, Ken, and I, Greg, um, Mary Jane Ricks, and, and, and others who, you know, looking to do it. So the last question answered, and it was, this is for a weeknight, not a weekend thing. And I said, yeah, definitely a weekday thing. Oh, yes. And so the, the thought was that it would take place in one of the, either the first or second week of March on a weeknight and just you know whoever if anyone has dates during those two weeks that they can't do it other than you know what posted meeting nights are then we'll we'll, we'll try and schedule something during that time but um you know there were some other questions um as to who would be invited and who would participate uh you know because you guys were we were all at the one that we did in november and you know who was invited and who participated wasn't exactly what the um, original thought was so you know that meeting was kind of hijacked for one specific topic and we're looking to try and at least I'm looking to not have that happen again there's too many topics to discuss so that's something that you know but once we get the date we'll kind of figure out the ground rules of it and who's invited and who's you know who's participating I don't think it's an audience participation event it's the 17 people invited to discuss it, and others are welcome to come and listen, but it's not really a a, a free for all like it was the last time, because it turned into a three and a half hours of listening to people talk about the same thing for three and a half hours. Mr. Chairman, were you were you kind of thinking about the library again and having a similar setup? The, sort of the library, this room, where, you know, wherever we where, we haven't decided where, but it's a similar setup to that. I'm asking for preference. Yeah, like I, I don't have a preference. I, the golf course. Whatever, you know, yeah, I would think that the um, the library would make more sense. But then again, um, this building, we don't get kicked out when the time comes. Right. At the end of time, you know, there's a there's no time bell here. Mm -hmm. The library, you have to leave by a certain time. Mm -hmm. Just not as... And if we start... We could probably do downstairs. Because there's like... The, I know it seems odd, yeah. but it's the presence of the yeah. podium. Justine is right. We, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have to sit. We don't, we don't have to sit here either. We can we can yeah. we can go sit there. So we're uh, not. It, we don't have the yeah. the idea that we're somehow sitting up here. I understand what you're saying. We can but sit up like EDC does. We can know, sit we this up. To, we can sit this up in a square right, too. Or downstairs. That's right. any, any place is fine. But um, sure. you know, the library would be great. But I don't. I don't know if we. So if we start at what time we usually start at seven. Right. You know, but we use, so we usually start at seven. Yeah, what happens if it runs into if ten? If it tells we got to leave at nine, nine yeah. we might not be done in two hours, given the, you know, the the, the <clears> amount <throat> of information and in, in in kind of the gravity of the conversation, what's expected what's expected is going to probably carry on a little longer than two hours, regardless of where we are. So. But, but anyway, so that was the, that was, we had that conversation. So I'll send out an email tomorrow because we just kind of, I think when was that, that email was today, was it? The, um, I think that, e that last email went today I where it was, today, or over the weekend, I, I where it was, was it a weekend thing and not a weekend thing? And I said, no, I, I don't have a Saturday available for, like for me weeks. Would you like to set the poll? Oh, good Lord, no. <laughs> no. I mean, it's not like I can do a quick survey, but Justine's saying no. I don't well, have no, to. it doesn't matter. 
I'll let you do the administrative work if you no, want. No, that's fine. And you want like a survey monkey thing? Is that what you're saying? I'm, I'm asking to as I can do it. I can do. I can. I can do it. I can do it. Don't worry about it. I'll do it. It's not a problem. I have to set a date. I'll let you do it. It's fine. I'll Basically, do it. I think if you just send an email to everybody and say, "That's what's going to be. Give, what, us, what, give us a blackout. Give us the yeah. blackout Here's the dates. Weeks. Right. What dates can't you do? Sure, it's easy. <laughs> as long as you post it on time. I always have problems with those survey monkeys because my calendar is on the same thing as <clears> my where my the thing is. We have to switch back. Yeah, okay, yeah, that yeah. date's available. That yeah. date's not. Available. So okay. anyway, um, so now it's it's we we'll go back to the um, we're actually in line for your. your Town administrative report. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. No, but I thought that was, <coughs> was appropriate to shift gears to talk about that. So, um, again, I encourage the public to look at the town administrative report. It's not not the longest this week, so um, some good pictures in there, and I appreciate the the department heads that that contribute pretty regularly, like uh, Amy Lovelace with the Council on Aging. I love her, all the pictures she does. Um, also, with uh, Chief being he went on vacation last week, so I filled in some stuff from the um, police department. Um, I also want to point out um, the sustainability committee. There's a sustainability yeah, I was going to say, can can you share a little bit okay. about what so that Kate what Wheeler, that is? Kate, resident Kate Wheeler came to me about on actually two different groups. One is the tree committee, which is actually chaired by the tree warden, just come off of the DBW director, just because as we get, <coughs> you know, whether it be site plans or whatever, and and it, that it's a working group, so it's a town administrator appointed body that is supposed to advise the tree warden for the tree committee but i'm mentioning that because kate wheeler had also advocated for that that's where her name had come up otherwise for the sustainability committee kate wheeler approached me asking for my support and her proposal for some sort of group to help kind of be the the the, the advocacy amongst all the town's plans whether it be master plan open space recreation green communities programming capital improvement plan we're also doing the municipal vulnerability program right now and so she felt that there was a need for uh, residents to advise town staff on the interrelationship of all these different plans i don't really have any objections to it if she wants to volunteer to do it i'm happy to have some some outside advice um if the board so I'm, as, as the chief administrative officer and the town administrator, I am allowed to appoint, as I've done in the past, ad hoc working group, um, if, as long as it's not through the initiative of the Board of Selectmen, which this is not. And so I wanted to keep it more at the staff level because they really are advising the staff and how to implement the master plan, the open space plan. That's, that's the... Okay. I so I mean, I, I I understand that part. I'm just trying to figure this thing out because um, the master plan is going to have their own. So they are also proposing a what's next. Committee. What's next committee, which is or that is part of what they're proposing, and they approached you on that and Very how good. that works. So this is how this is. I'm but that's how I'm, I'm having. The, you know the old saying: too many chefs in the kitchen. I get it. I'm also <laughs> <but> I, <laughs> <all> chefs. <laughs> what? I am hesitant to turn away when when someone like Kate Wheeler says I want to help. I, I do. Of course. Isn't of course. Kate's idea more along the line of relative specifically to sustainability, relative to um, green green yes. right. initiatives. Right. That's what yes. I thought. And it was. Uh, you know, I yeah. highly encourage yeah. the community to be involved in. Uh, you know, making sure that when a project comes before it, that there are people that are advocating for green aspects of that yeah. of that development. Yeah. That's what she, I, I believe That's what I that, That's that she wants yeah. to do. Okay. When you know, when somebody comes in and they, you know, okay, well, let's make sure that you have uh, that, that we advocate for uh, solar at that particular right. location, or you know, whatever it happens to be. So I, I think what she wants to do is is important and i think that we should encourage it uh, because it's you know it's a different set of eyes looking at issues that may be beyond what we normally would look at right and i i actually think that there should be some level of uh, of of a, of a green plan yes. for all of our planning going forward. I think there should be something in the in the planning And I'm not boards. disagreeing with you, but this is over here. What I'm reading is a lot more than uh, the, so what you're pointing out. She wants to, so it, I, it is a lot. But let, me, let me break it down a little bit per plan, right? So for the master plan, which I'm glad you brought up, not, the master plan is it's pretty widespread. Right. 
there is aspects to the capital portions, the building portions, the maintenance portions that are green related or sustainable. Mm -hmm. related. Sustainable also, though, it relates to trash and recycling collection. It relates to, um, um, I don't know, just this future planning, is, is, but also regular planning and whatnot. So that it's, it is helpful to have a group to kind of bounce stuff up off of. That way, it's not just the it's not just the bottle that it can be town hall sometimes where we all kind of like we'll get, we all talk to each other all the time. It's helpful mm -hmm. to have an outside. Speaker. Outside, yeah, yeah. Do we have uh, and forgive me for not knowing this? Do we have um, a green communities committee? We do as a requirement of the grant. Okay. So they, so they then only meet in regards to the like when we apply, it requires yeah. endorsement. That application has to be endorsed by a green communities committee. Right. They don't meet very regularly. But couldn't they do what? Oh, I think they're you know more. Yes, you're right. So, or, so in some, so in some communities, you have just a green communities committee. Yep, the but just handles the. My understanding is that that the current committee was not. There weren't. They weren't anything more than just the grant application. Okay, so that's, Kate, that's our, our green communities a, a com, a committee. The way I've observed it is yeah. more or less just applying for grants. They've been very successful at doing it. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. Um, and making sure that the, the um, you know, whatever they are, LED lights get put in the proper yeah. way and everything else. And we, yeah. we make sure that there are LED lights at the high school. Yeah. I think the, um, the initiative that Kate has is much wider and That's more, Im yeah. more impactful relative to specifically to development and the way that we move forward as a community relative to sustainability um, from an energy standpoint. Okay. Um, and so in other, in other towns, they have an yeah. energy committee. So, but 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 it's very it, it, just as the title alludes, it's very specific to building energy. But I like the sustainability that it's a little more. I mean, it's open space recreation too. Like it's a little more widespread. So who will they report to? Me. <laughs> They're an advisory group with Greg. Bingo. Right. Yeah. So they have to be reported every year. Yeah. But I mean, that also allows that if, if she wanted a lot of people on this committee, which I also I, I don't mind. So, but it also allows some flexibility that we can change the membership. It also means that they're not as strict as a town administrator working group as they are. They're just the title has to, their ha title happens to be committee. But as a, as a working group, um, they're not as strictly subject to open meeting law. So, although I always recommend all committees, working group or otherwise, to post their meetings publicly, have a web page, all that. But well, we, we, yeah. it allows them to be a little more flexible. They also don't have a budget, so they'll do as much as they can, but it's more advisory. Okay. All right, no, that, if, unless you have any other questions, Mr. Chairman. Uh, oh, I, 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 no, I totally I, interrupted I you, done, so. I wasn't done. <laughs> I, um, the town clerk was a little late with her submission with the, with the um, um, town administrator's report uh, department uh, submission. So she wanted to point out, though, that um, early voting is occurring next right. week. And, um, so we'll have some parking spaces out back uh, for folks, um, but you know, she'll be she'll be here. The, I think this room is the polls. So if you want to early vote, come next week. Okay. <sighs> All right. So I, I talked about the um, tribe board meeting. The only other thing that I have this week is that um, last Tuesday, I believe, while well, you guys were up here talking about soccer fields and mowers, I was downstairs with Megan, and we were listening to the. Um, conversation between the uh, planning board members and um, town the town um, planner and Wayne Wayne town engineer and um, Rick Asman and uh, representation of um, from the DePetri capital group talking about uh, working on holidays and whatnot at, um, mm -hmm. at you know Maynard crossing and naturally you know, they promised it would never happen again and everything else, and they were going to apply for, um, you know, apply for their variations. If they had variations in the in the future, they would apply before the date and make sure that they had permission to be where they were, were when it was out of, outside the scope and hours that they're allowed under the um, special permits and the MOA and any of those types of things. And so it was an interesting conversation. Um, and then there was some, there were, you know, the, the takeaways were that they were going to work together better, try and work together better to m ensure that um, none of the neighbors were being upset and, um, you know, having people working when they weren't supposed to be working. Um, the town did 
did issue them their first fine, and the first fine that anyone in the town government can remember for 30 plus years for type of thing. But um, and there was some discussion as, and it's, I think it's kind of, I guess, Megan, you could agree or disagree, kind of things to be determined how those things would be going moving forward, how yeah. how the mm -hmm. fines would be assessed or not assessed, and how. Um, you know how that would take place. So I do have to say that I worked on Monday. You guys putting the electronic board sign there. <laughs> so, I was very impressed. That was so, there. Oh, that's not that our was, sign. Oh, oh, that was, oh, that was their sign? So, I thought so, that was a town so, sign. So we had the conversation. The oh. We had the conversation that was pretty cool. about not being there Monday, you mean? Yeah. yeah so we had the conversation, Megan and I and Greg, and I said, did you go by Monday to see if they're working? Because I wasn't going. No, it wasn't. Well, they I, weren't I working. Either. It was, I was very but impressed. It was, um, yeah. Sign. It was quiet. That was their sign. That yeah. was their sign. I thought it was ours. No, so wow. anyway, so they, it was a, it was a, I mean, it was overall, I think it was a, a positive meeting and that, you know, everybody kind of got to say what they wanted to say um, and agreed it, you know, agreed, agreed that there were some mistakes made and that they're going to work together to try and correct the mistakes going forward. And that was it. Um, anything, Armand? Um, yeah, a couple of things. One, and um, Megan was there obviously for the EDC meeting, and I think you put that on your report briefly. Um, we were, um, thank you again for inviting Jim Vaza. He's the uh, capital planning uh, group leasing, leasing manager. And um, everybody felt like it was a breath of fresh air in comparison to what we hear from Mill and Maine. Uh, talking about uh, being collaborative and um, working together with the town uh, to get things done. And there, and um, I, I guess from my perspective, the way I see it, uh, they're moving along and there's a few things that are going on in the development in that area that they need to refigure things and re re rethink some of the things about what they're doing to their approach to a couple of the buildings there. Uh, but all in all, they're uh, moving along on a lot of the... Uh, projects are coming on online uh, fast um, and uh, we, I was impressed to hear that the um, uh, Camilla Gardens is already 80% I believe uh, uh, so it's unbelievable so how fast it's moving um, mm -hmm. and 30% on, on the view um, so anyway but I was I was uh, impressed my personally I was impressed with Jim his approach his uh, style and personality and I think he yeah, he went a long way with the, with the EDC committee, and I, I, felt, I felt very good about it. Uh, the other piece, and I think we talked about this in the past, and uh, we both attended the MMA conference, and um, I think they made a decision. They took a vote to change the actual name of the uh, selectmen to select a board. Right. Yeah. And from what I understand, there's about 85 towns now that already have changed that name. And I just wondered whether or not um, something we should be thinking about, talking about, and finding what the process is to, so, to make that happen. No, I, th I think this has been all over the past, and I think it's, it's um, the answer is the uh, charter review. So every 10 years, the charter has to be reviewed. And, and so the, the title, you know, you start at the top, start at the, what it, how it says in the charter, and then we can change the bylaws after that. Um, and, there, and the <coughs> charter review is up now, it's right? Up. I think we're... With the, so the oh. uh, town moderator proposed that we start the process over the summer. Perfect. Okay. We're just we're trying to figure out whether so we need a, a, an article of town meeting or not. For so, it, so we don't know that does it need to be voted on by town meeting? Yes. Yeah. Well, a change to the charter. The charter, charter, yeah. charter, yeah. charter, charter, charter yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. So it's so, so it's, it's okay. going to take about and a year. Requires, it requires two thirds, but it's it's um you can amend the charter at any time. It just yeah. it, you don't have to just it doesn't have to be. Amended only when it is um, the charter review. Okay. When it is annual, you know the dec, whatever it is for de the decade. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can you can amend it at any time with a two thirds majority vote. So, but to do that, and I support doing it because it's you know that's I think it's the, the words that are being used by everybody. But to do it everywhere in the charter right. that selectman appears needs to be changed. So it takes work. It's mm. not just a simple. So let's do it. You can say, let's have it, okay, everybody, let's make, let's call it the select board. That's great. But to really make it official mm. would right. require that the charter be changed to everywhere that shows up, it, it shows up. And I mean, I, 
Certainly, I, I, there's no reason not to do it. It's just, it's just an issue of <laughs> but the, time. What do difference it. does it make when anyone calls us in that regard, right? I mean, but the other question is, now, if we do it in a change in the charter, do we have to change bylaws? Yes, so... So in where the bylaws, it, I mean, okay, so to David's point, it, would we have to, I mean, when we're changing... We have to change very, name tags. We have to change Right. No, but we're changing, <laughs> we're changing very minor things in, in some of um, Bill Coleman's updates every well, the every every, every year. But but Bill is changing those constantly. Yeah. And my question is throughout our bylaws the the word selectmen appear Probably. In, in reference to this body. Right. Right. So do we have to then would he have to then go review the bylaws? The bylaws. Yep. I think, it, it, I think you, you know could what I'm probably, saying. Is, is, yeah, that I, would be a, I could probably just say that would be a, you can make a motion to the town meeting that says wherever the word selectman appears in the bylaws will now be shifted to be uh, select board. Select board. You may yeah. not even need to because but the bylaws the may be like I don't think you could have a bylaw that conflicts with the town charter anyways. So if you change a charter, that implies that the bylaws have to change. Either way, we can spell that out. I mean, it's, it's you know. I, I watched when, when Littleton, I mean, I've told you this before, I, I'm, I'm a nerd with this shit. Oh, excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that. Uh, but, Emily. That was good. But I, you know, I watched when, when, I think it was Littleton, when Littleton did this, the same thing. I think it was Littleton. Um, that wasn't me. It might have been Boxborough. Might have been Boxborough. Boxborough did it. The Concord did it. The Boxborough debate it. that they had over the way that that it read in certain because they, they had debate because it said like they you know instead of they they wanted to change it to be it's some other oh. descriptive word um, and it was like when the board oh. of selectmen or when the select board does something they and it's like well you know it it has to be it was incredible the the amount of debate that I went into it we don't get into that level of detail but uh, well, you know the, it, oh the, oh when yeah they refer to the chairman it can't refer to he it has to be referred to as the, oh, the chair well no, no but it just it just it just chair i think board. i think it just yeah. says okay. chair chair the just, chair. just should, the word chair it should it should but i i mean i don't it certainly is certainly is something that's been okay. no 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 what mike when we do the ward article this year, do you put selectmen or select selectmen? No, because we haven't. We can't I mean, change yes. any. No. Until the vote takes everything's, everything's the same until the charter. So if the charter review, if the charter review is this summer, we'll let them and, suggest whatever change. You know. And the and the reason I'm bringing it up because I know it's a process. So that, I mean, what's yeah. the what is the you know where's the process start and you know. So it, so it may start with what you just said. You give right. me direction to to draft an article. That we'll present to you and have Lisa check it over. So, in the meantime, is it appropriate for us to? Is it appropriate for us to, you know, refer to us as select board or Why no? Not? We can't, right? Why not? It won't so be, we it, could do that not from our. It's not, official. it's not official. Not changing any documents until it's official. Right. Well, I, I just don't know. I mean, if we have to change it legally in the charter, why we would, you know. If we're going to call ourselves something different, why we wait until we do it that's correctly our, that's and officially the, yeah, before we right. do it? We can, I mean, you know, I, I don't think it, yes. Yeah, from Chumford had the same thing they did. They took a vote earlier. They put it as a warrant item. So when they had the review of their charter, it was already approved by the town. That's what they did. Mm. Yeah, I got that part. Yeah. Two thirds was already, that way it's ahead because you're doing the summer review, so. But I don't, I don't. I yeah, don't, we could do it in the fall if we have a special time meeting. I don't have a problem with whatever we call ourselves, but you know that if we go and change it mm. and we start referring to ourselves as certain, certain, Name. And we're not. And we're not. We will have those that are the charter nerds that will call us <laughs> out. <outside. laughs> so I don't, I don't, I mean, I think it's, you know, we, we've talked about it a bunch. We've heard people come and suggest we do it, and there's no objection from any, I don't, doesn't sound no. like there's any objection. Mm -hmm. But I just, we just have to make sure we do it correctly because we do have those that uh, call us on every little misstep. Yep. But, um, Mr. Point. Gavin? Good point. Uh, yeah, getting back to the discussion that we had last Thursday, whatever night it was, on the Recreation, rec Recreation rec Commission, yeah. and the whole issue with the new Fowler Field that will be not coming online until what, spring of, not this coming spring, right, but next, next spring or sometime, long off. Uh, but the issue of maintaining it is uh, a concern, and we obviously we don't want to have done all this work to have it fail on us but the whole there was there was discussion about this need for a, a proper mower yeah. for the 
for athletic use. Right. And uh, does the golf course have a mower that they would be able to lend to allow us to mow? They may, but I doubt that they do. Yeah, but I think, I think Justin referred to that, that it's a different type of what, what they use there is different than what the soccer fields need. I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, even if it's just to carry us over so that we have what we need to, to drive it down the road like the guy in the movies do. Uh, <laughs> so the, the golf course, there's two types of mowers. There's a, a roller mower. There's several different roller mowers, type. which is the type, yeah. which is a fairway and, fairways and greens type of thing and surrounds. And then there's, a, then there's a rough mower, which is just exactly like the mower you push around the yard. Right. With a you know spinning it, it, blade, suck it up and cut it. But I don't know. And I thought it was a, he, what he was saying was specific to soccer fields. I think it's kind of. I think what they use is kind of a hybrid of the two. To, yes. Because of the yeah, height. Come, yep. It's a specific height. Because you have to adjust it to to different. I don't know, but um, I, I, you know, after the meeting, I, I was only cut the end of it because I was downstairs. I said something to Justin, and I mean, it seemed to me that you know maintenance never really came up as. A, a, a part of the discussions, and I looked back and I didn't see it in any of the notes that were in the minutes of the previous discussions with those guys. But anyways, but it kind of was, you know, it's a town field. I would just assume that we're not going to hire a special group to come and cut that one field, that it would be assumed by so the same people the that were doing in the past. That's, that's the biggest cap. Isn't there, a, isn't maintaining the field part of the school budgets? No. So, no. So they, so we're, we have... So Mark Courier is the foreman of the of the grounds, like the, the parks and grounds crew, mm -hmm. and he does all the field maintenance. Some of the expenses may be covered by some of the fees that the school department charges, mm -hmm. um, but it's not, it's not a lot of fees <coughs> there, and it's just not it's not it's not enough to handle eighteen thousand dollars a year, certainly not. Um, and so it will fall back to just the regular schedule. I'm not sure what promises were made or or what or what. Handshakes were made between the Recreation Commission and and the town regarding what maintenance may be fulfilled. I suppose that there was some sort of conversation to that. I know I probably would have. If I, I'm surprised if I didn't um, when I when I endorsed the application. If I if I was allowed to endorse it to the CPC, because I would have said who's going to pay for maintenance. Mm -hmm. Usually CPC says that too. So I guess I guess it might have been satisfactory that it would just fall back under the marker or crew and his schedule as he gets around to all the fields as he can. But if there was an understanding that the town will or would invest in a mower to help support that, so be it. Because it's, it's well, more I, than just, based on the discussion, it's more than just mowing the grass. Right. You, they, the there is consistent, mm -hmm. proper uh, fertilization and it's a commitment. Mm -hmm. watering and... The, you know, they use different different style type of, of mix of grass uh, seeds, grass and seed for the edges versus the middle. I right. mean, it was th this is the science, and I mean, the guy who was yeah. here, you know, he went to school for it, <laughs> and uh, so I do think we had a discussion about the maintenance of the field, but I think it was sort of one of those things where you know, well, we didn't we realize so it was eighteen thousand dollars about getting the field, and they were they were able to come up with the money to get it done. I think the maintenance issue had come up, but it was totally lost on the excitement, mm. and, and that's part of that's uh, that's on us, and it's it's um, you know, and I think it's a lesson learned for the future when we start to approve something. For example, this bell, you know, you put a bell out there. Suddenly, are we going to have to be out having somebody out cleaning it every you know every month? Yeah, so to, I hope not. So I, know, that's, I know. we had that. We to your point, we had the exact same conversation. I had that conversation with with Justin within the last two weeks about the banners, the, the mm, hometown heroes. That's right, because that's going to be maintained, too. You know, the conversation too. was, Justin, once we get them up, how much is it going to be, mm. you know, to maintain these annually, and, and is it something that your department can do? And it's clearly something they can do. Same with he the said the first trail. couple of years, right, it's, it's a minimal trail. amount of maintenance, but he said, you know, as time goes on, they break and you got to replace them, and that's that's the upkeep. And, and, and we have a skeleton crew, so that's why, one of the reasons why we don't yeah. have trash cans on every yeah. corner in town, because we don't have the people to go around and take the trash out regularly. It's, mm. it's a, we're, we're a city but, with a town worth of staff. So, but I, I also think, though, that's, that that was, and, and to David's point, and, um, you know, it, I, I, it probably, and I don't remember the conversations regarding the maintenance, but I think that it was pretty much, the, it will be maintained like we maintain all the other fields. But it was unanticipated that 
there was going to be this much of a cost associated with maintaining right. that field. And and I completely understand, and I said this to the Recreation Department, Recreation Commission afterwards, that, you know, one thing that everybody was saying was if we don't maintain it to this standard, it won't last as long, it will go, it will go away faster, and, and everything else. And, and I, I basically said to them, I said, you have just defined all of our roads, all of our capital equipment, all of our buildings, yeah. all of our fields. I, that, that, that is pretty much where we are. And as, as selectmen, we look at it from the entire picture of every need there is in town. And, you know, we do want to help as much as we can, but sometimes we can't fund everything to the nth degree of what it should, <coughs> according to consultants, be funded to. So. Yet I also think that down the road, I'm, I know they have a plan about raising some money through marketing or, you know, sponsorships oh, and all that. So they, that'll they be... They raised that point, but there apparently are some legal issues oh, with the school with, uh, advertising yeah. on school property. Yeah. So they're going to reach out to the school committee to find out how that works. It's funny, though, because Alumni Field is Alumni Field. Yeah, no, I was going to say, yeah. The school? yeah. No, you, can, you can have but the on, the, on the fence. On the, the signage is on the public side, and yeah. I think that that's significant. Oh. You just have to offer it publicly, so you can't... You can't just approach, you, you know, it has to be getting on procurement. And so you're, you're offering a service, you're offering a kind of a lease of a school property or town property, and um, you just offer it, you just like go out to bid and people bid on it. It's not that complicated. Okay. Anything else, Dave? No. Justine? Uh, just a couple quick questions, uh, a couple quick things. We're, um, Budget Subcommittee is still meeting. Uh, we're going to be meeting next Thursday uh, at 7 o'clock somewhere in Town Hall. Not sure yet, where yet. Um, this will be our first meeting from, since the uh, February 8th meeting. Um, and we're just looking to keep honing in on everything and talking to both Finance Committee, School Committee, and, and see where we all are uh, moving forward. Um, the other it's kind of a question slash comment. Um, it's actually about 129. And there is a there is a construction there is a flag light um, that is apparently it's lighting the American flag that is now up in at 129 Parker. But the way it shines is actually basically onto 27. So it basically shines in the windows of like two or three houses that are along 27. Um, and I'm just wondering if there's any, I, I realize it's not a big deal, but I'm just wondering if there's a way that they can just angle it up so it lights the flag as That's opposed Molly's to just lighting. That's Molly's nightlight, so if you turn it. <laughs> well, I, it was off for the longest time because there wasn't a flag there. Now there's a flag, but I drive and I, so I leave at five in the morning and, and it's, it's very bright. Okay, yeah. right. So yeah. I was just I'll curious. Um, again, not the end of the world, but I just figured it was yeah, worth yeah. an ask. Yeah. And that's all. They want to be good neighbors, they say. I, and that's, like I said, you know, I, I looked at the flag at Alumni Field, and, and that one's lit from underneath. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah, so. They this in, a, in a different way, like on another And it's pole. not even actually, I mean, you can kind of see it. I mean, it's not, the flag's not actually really lit to its potential. So I'm not quite sure what it, so. And is it permanent? I guess that's the other question I had. Or is it just during the construction? Flag and the yeah. light. I think it's permanent. It's the permanent. Light, okay. The, 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 the light. The light might be temporary, but I don't know. Well, then the light has to be permanent if the flag is has to be. Yeah, light. I'll check in with that. Yeah. Yeah. By permanent. the way, I also brought up. I don't know how people pay attention to that. Really, <laughs> the, a lot of dark flags. The, 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 the flag was torn, and I think Justin was going to replace it. The, uh, the alumni field. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, they're not going to replace that. That's that's like that's like really expensive. Well, the, he told me there's two different <coughs> flags they put up. He said one they put up for the winter and oh, okay. Yeah, they, they, and they um they sewed the right before Veterans Day. Um, they had taken it down and they sewed it up because it had been ripped. Okay. And I was told at the Veterans Day parade by Ed Sokolowski that they were actually going to replace the flag and. He said they were going to put up a smaller one for the winter because of the, the heavy, yeah, winds, heavy winds. But they never did it. He said he, they did. So maybe they we'll didn't. Ask. Yeah. We'll All right. Okay. Sorry, Justine. Oh, no. She's, no, she's, I'm done. She's had her say this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Okay. So uh, <coughs> make, a, make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Emily. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I will make sure it lasts.